Hi gang, if you're like me, you probably have some dead batteries lying around that you just throw out or hand in for recycling. But are they really dead? They're considered dead only because they don't have enough voltage for the appliances that you use. With the Jewel Thief circuit, those dead batteries can still be used for some things. They can be undead. For example, this LED won't run off this battery. But if I first run the power through this Jewel Thief circuit, then the LED lights up. Why? If I measure the battery voltage, you'll see it's only around 1.27 volts. This LED needs at least 1.85 volts, so from the LED's point of view, this battery's dead. Now here's what the voltage looks like on my oscilloscope when the LED is being powered through the Joule Thief circuit. Notice that at times the voltage is as high as 24 volts, enough to power the LED. So the circuit is messing with the voltage and the current from the battery in order to output enough voltage, some of the time, to light the LED. Of course to us it looks like the LED is always fully powered. Here's a circuit diagram you'll need if you want to make one of these Joule Thiefs. And here are the parts you'll need. You'll need a battery, you'll need an LED, this one here worked fine for me but so did all these other ones. You'll need a transistor, this one here is an NTE123AP um, but many many others will do as well. You'll need a resistor, this one here is 820 ohms, the diagram says 1 kilo ohm, but I've heard of people use 2 kilo ohms, um, so you basically use whatever works for you. Or you could do something like this. This is a variable resistor or potentiometer. And uh, this one you can select anywhere from 0 to 5 kilo ohms. You also need a ferrite core. So one of these. Uh, some people get them from compact fluorescent light bulbs, but the last compact fluorescent light bulb I opened up didn't have a round one in it like this. Uh, I got mine from this thing right here. I don't know what it is. I got it from a junk shop because it had lots of neat parts in it. You'll also need some thin insulated wire. Um, this is a kit which I bought from Radio Shack many, many years ago. In it I have a 30 gauge, 26 gauge, and 22 gauge, so I'm going to use the 30 and the 26. To put it together I'm going to use this breadboard right here, that way I can play around with it. Some people solder it together, uh, which is probably better because you want to keep the wires and the leads as short as possible. But this allows for playing around experimenting. If you don't know anything about breadboards, uh, see my video on uh, amplifiers for crystal radio where I talk about them in detail. The first thing I'm going to do is wire up my uh, core right here, wrap two wires around it. Um, so I'll cut around a uh, less than a foot length of wire, same length for each of them. And I'll twist um, two of the ends together, make it easy to work with. Take my core and just start winding it through. The direction doesn't matter. So there's the finished result. I got about 13 turns on it. Next I'm going to strip the insulation off the end of each wire and to do that I use an X-Acto knife and just gently scrape it off. Some people use uh, sandpaper, uh, some people use acetone or nail polish remover. Uh, dipping it in paint thinner will also do. And now to put it all together by following the circuit diagram. How do you know which way the transistor goes? Well if you notice in the, the transistor has a flat side and you notice that in the diagram. So use that as a guide as to where the legs go. And what about the LED? Well, the same thing with the LED. The LED has uh, one leg longer than the other one. And uh, that's also noted in the diagram. So use that as a guide as to where to put the, the legs. Now this wire, the 30 gauge wire, is a little thin. So uh, for putting in those holes. So I'm going to wrap it around some thicker wire. And you have to be very careful the way you put this in the circuit. Um, so check the diagram when you do it. Make sure you get it right. Now for the battery, I have a battery case here that normally takes two batteries. So all I've done is taken a wire and soldered it to this end and gone to that spring on that end. It's just for convenience for me. And that way I could put my battery in the remaining slot and use the two wires. Okay, so I'll just put in some 
extra wires here so I can uh, connect to the battery. Negatives together, the LED should light up. There you go. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, RimStar.org, for more science and tech videos. That includes the one giving info on using a breadboard while I show how to make a crystal radio amplifier, one on how to make a solar cell using a sheet of copper, one on how to make an electroscope, which students seem to find useful for assignments and tests, and many more. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Give a thumbs up or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.